So these are all like graduate students at, uh, at CUNY Graduate Center in New York, uh, where Milgram taught and, and was a professor. And he trained them, these like 22 to you know, 28 year old students, that's kind of the age of grad student in those days. And, they, and trained them, go up to maybe even target older people, you know, uh, and go right up to them. Doesn't matter how many open seats there are, go up to them and say, do you want to your seats, you know? <laughs> and what the students reported was a variety of, of weird reactions. People had never had this happen to them, they thought it was super, super weird, they'd look at them weirdly. Uh, but another thing they found was that the people would comply most of the time. The people would be like, I don't know why you think you own my seat, but there's nothing I can do to resist your request, so it's yours, you know? Um, so it was a very strange thing, where, like, you know, 80 year old women would get up and give these graduate students, I know, right? I know. <laughs> would get up and give these graduate students their seats. So that was interesting, right? That people comply with requests, and there's a lot of research on that. They comply with even absurd requests. Uh, it's also interesting that the people, um, uh, you know, are so freaked out by it. So they're sort of like freaked out by these breaches, they're breaking the norms, but also we're gonna try and keep things going smoothly here, and I'll do that by acquiescing to your requests. But the biggest observation about these breaching experiments was something that was going on inside the graduate students' heads. And Milgram himself went and participated in the experiment as a sort of research assistant and recorded the same thing. They felt extraordinary stress. And you can read accounts that Milgram wrote about trying to psych himself up to do this. Where he'd be sitting on the, on the subway train, or standing on the subway train, at the end, he'd have his victim targeted, and he'd be trying to psych himself up, and, and as he went to go do it, you know, he just had this like huge stress and anxiety like rising up in him as he went to go break this norm and fracture the social order. And, and so one of the observations from the study is that norms are enforced in our heads, right? You know, one of the reasons we don't go around reaching, one of the reasons we do follow these social norms is that we would feel great stress and anxiety where we not to. And in a way, we watch ourselves, you know, uh, like the Freudian superego, uh, George Herbert Mead's generalized other, who posed an opticon. It's a common idea in social science. We enforce society on ourselves. It gets in our head and we get stressed out. Another example of this is, um, like a couple weeks ago, I like fell out of my chair at the office. I'm gonna go sit down. I know, it's just a series of embarrassing stories about me. I'm gonna go sit down and like miss the chair and I fell on my, on my ass. And I got embarrassed. No one was watching. I got embarrassed. And I also, I, fl I got flushed like red, you know? Like even the physiological signature of being embarrassed, right? And uh, nobody was there. Why was I embarrassed? Nobody was watching. But that's just it. When you break norms, when you embarrass yourself, people don't even have to be there because uh, you enforce it in your head, you know? You go to break a norm, your cortisol levels up, you get stressed out, you fall off your seat, you get, you know, you get embarrassed, your face flushes, and so on. Breaching is now common in entertainment, right? Uh, ever since Candid Camera in the 60s, they've had these shows where people are sent out and purposely break norms. Uh, Jackass has some of this. Have you guys watched the Jamie Kennedy experiment? I think this is the best example of this. I mean, it gets a little bit monotonous over time, and Jamie Kennedy is maybe a little annoying, but maybe, whatever. Yeah, uh, but uh, he is brilliant. Uh, they, they have some breaches in there. They're just unbelievably hilarious to me. Um, so the Jamie Kennedy experiment is great. Obviously, the Ali G show is great. Uh, Boiling Point, I put this under Smith Point, but I've never watched this. Is this a good show? Yes. Okay. <laughs> They're breaking norms, aren't they? Okay. Uh, and in a lot of uh, shows from overseas, actually, like the European shows where they have people break norms are, are among the most hilarious. Uh, uh, I don't know the names of any of them, or else I'd refer you to some. Um, so Garfinkel had students uh, do breaches as a class assignment. You're probably seeing what's gonna come here. Um, yeah, so it's a common social psychology assignment to have people go out in the world and purposely break social norms and then document what happens. And it's extremely possible that you might be asked to do this at the end of the lecture. Um, so Garfinkel uh, was the first person to do this. I think it was 1960s, he was an ethnic methodologist, and he was like, uh, he got his students when they went home for holiday break to go break social norms. And so one of the ones he had was he would send them home uh, for Christmas, holiday break, whatever, and behave like tenants when they went over to their parents' uh, their parents' place, you know? Like leave a little tip in the morning, mom, you know, make the bed, mom does, you know, does your laundry, you know, you say, you, know, you don't say anything, you don't say thank you, you just pay her, you know. And uh, and, and in the study, what happens? How do your parents react to that? Uh, not well. Uh, or you got people, well, this is what people have done breaking things is go to McDonald's and then order something that's not on the menu, which is sort of weird, no one ever does that, because um, everybody knows exactly what McDonald's sells, right? Like, if you didn't know what McDonald's sells, you'd be a fool. Um, so you order pizza or a Whopper at McDonald's, other things people do, stand uncomfortably close to another person while having a normal conversation. This is, this is one that's happened a lot. Tip your friends for being kind or nice to you. Um, try to negotiate bus fare, right? You're like, I don't think that I'm not going the whole way, so why would I give you the full dollar and 25 cents? See what happens then, you know? Uh, Shake your head when you say yes, nod your head when you mean no, that'll freak people out. Um, it's not very hard to do. Uh, ride the elevator facing the wrong way. Elevator breaches. Have you seen somebody do that one? You've done that, yeah. That'll freak people out, definitely. Elevator breaches are very common. For some reason, when people get a breaching assignment, they head straight for an elevator. Okay? I was, when I was a freshman in college, I was in a breaching experiment where people were just sitting on chairs in the elevator. I didn't think that was much of a breach, but it did kind of weird me out. And they were like talking to each other about my uh, reaction. They're like, yeah, you thought that was pretty weird. They're like, he seems, he seems uncomfortable. And I'm like, I'm right here, you know? Yeah. So, uh, uh, actually, my friend Will Calcott, who designed the class, he had somebody turn in a breach. Let's see if I can find it here. Um, he had somebody turn in a breach that was really elaborate. Some, you know, it was like a breaching assignment and, let's see here. Oh yeah, this one's kind of cool. This is a very weird breaching assignment. This is not copyrighted, so it can be webcast. Um, uh, yes, okay, this one. Um, this guy basically, he had to do his breaching assignment. We're talking about a three-page paper assignment and he just threw himself into it. This undergraduate was a student of my friend Will's. Um, and actually, I actually emailed Will recently and was like, hey, can you send me this breaching assignment? He was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so the guy just dresses up like in a chicken outfit and wanders around campus and is set to hip hop. I don't know why that is. Maybe the breach is on us. Um, so if, if you were to actually do this, like videotape your breaches, you would get some kind of extra credit. Uh, uh, if you do something this elaborate, can you all, you all do this kind of stuff, right? This would be nice. I would like this. So, <laughs> it's not required, but it would be, it would be awesome, you know? It goes like, people don't like the chicken man. Yeah. yeah. And that's all it is, just people staring at the chicken man. Um, but I like it, I don't know why. So, uh, so that's good, that's encouraged. We would like more of that. Um, and so, yeah, as you're guessing, you have an assignment, a breach assignment that will be due. No, it's not Friday. Ooh, how'd that happen? Thank you. But it is February 19? Okay, thank you. So, just to get this straight. This will be actually great, unlike, um, unlike uh, the rest of these. Okay, just a second. Okay, so we actually created ABCDF, you know, like a grading system. Um, so please fulfill all requirements. Uh, also, you know, some of the papers you can turn in, they're, they're a little messy. So please, God, proofread this paper, you know? Um, and review the parts of this lecture on, on breaching. And here's the way the assignment works. Make a list of three breaching exercises that you
Man, I got like 100 of those videos. That would be a fun Saturday for me. That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you, I mean, seriously, if you want to do the video, that would be just awesome. Okay. So uh, I encourage you to get creative. Uh, these ideas, they don't have to be brilliant. You know, you can get, shh, you're not, you're not going yet. Uh, they don't have to be brilliant, uh, but the more creative, the better. You know, you're not going to be great on creativity. You just have to get it right, you know. But it would be awesome if you did get creative with this. And I'll collect the coolest ones for lecture and I'll talk about them. So for example, last year when I taught this class, one of my favorite ones was this guy. He just went up and down telegraph, uh, slapping high fives to people, you know, and detailing people. It's very simple, but it's actually kind of hilarious, right? Um, and he just detailed people's reactions, and uh, the paper was great. It was all like proper social science right up. He's like, he's like, you found that some people, you know, would respond. Uh, you got three classes of response. Like some people would enthusiastically be like, yeah, you know, and then other people be like, they do it, but kind of wonder why they were doing it, you know? And then uh, other people wouldn't, you know, wouldn't even respond. They just kind of looked at them funny. And, uh, and he was like, uh, everybody, he, in the he's like, everybody enjoys a good high five, uh, but it's not always appropriate to do it. Um, another person got up in front of a movie screen when a movie was getting ready to play and just stood there staring at everybody, just like staring at them, expressionless. And people went bananas on her. They were like throwing stuff at her and she just stood around, you know, like, like, like Gandhi or something. You know, she thought she was taking this big stand for the purposes of the breaching assignment. But I want to emphasize, don't, please, God, don't do anything illegal or immoral. Uh, and people always violate this, and I want you to know that I need it this time. Uh, don't go order beer and bar in the underage and be like, Professor Witherson, really you know, please do not do that. Uh, don't get me in trouble. I can easily get in trouble. So I'm trusting you. I maybe shouldn't, but I am, because I trust you. So please, God, don't do anything illegal or immoral. And have a great week. I'll see you next Tuesday. We will hand back the assignments outside, outside there. Remember who has yours. Okay.